Nothing like a big buck. Everybody wishes, every hunter wishes that he could get a big 13, 14, 14 pointer like this one. But you know, deer are not the most popular game animal in this country. You know what is? There it is. Zooming across your screen right there, a few snowflakes too. This is the cottontail rabbit. The season is open for nearly six months and across the country, it is the number one game animal. I'm gonna take you cottontail hunting, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost, it's Thursday night, time for Michigan Outdoors. There's America's most popular dog, the Beagle. And you can tell by the way it's holding its mouth what song it's singing. Beagles have melodic voices, at least to rabbit hunters. These dogs are as much of an attraction to rabbit hunting as those tasty cottontails. Now, you don't train beagles the way you train other dogs. They either run rabbits or they don't. And every beagle seems to have a little different style. Just like rabbit hunters prefer different guns, different boots, different hats, and different jackets. Now, Bob enjoys rabbit hunting as much as anybody I know. He likes beagles that move along at a good clip. He likes aggressive beagles. And it goes without saying that Bob likes to eat rabbit. In fact, I don't know a rabbit hunter who doesn't. Now, Greg from Muskegon was along for this hunt. He enjoys the afternoon hunts, and he lives far enough north for both cottontails and snowshoe hares. And Mark, well, Mark Martin, most known for his skill at guiding anglers to Lunker Walleye in Muskegon Lake, but he's also attracted by any good patch of rabbit cover. Okay, well, this is about 40 acres of how many brush piles? Uh, there'd be 10, 11 of these great big brush piles from where they cleared it. They just left the stuff. And, and uh, we're lucky because the woodchucks haven't in, in made enough holes that the rabbits can just consistently hide and not come out. They've got to come out. So the rabbits are there. They're under the stumps, the deadfalls. In the raspberries that have grown up between all this stuff, they're tough to get out. I'm not saying we're going to get every one out, but there aren't so many holes that uh, we can't get any mm -hmm. of them out. If if we were to hunt this without dogs, what tough. Would it, tough? Tough going. Usually, you know, I think you can kill about as many rabbits or take as many rabbits uh, without a dog as you can with a dog. But this kind of hunting, you definitely need the dogs. And not to run the rabbits in a big circle. You need the dogs simply to root them out of the brush mm -hmm. piles. Okay, now the dogs. You have your, your two beagles. Describe your beagles, Mark. I've heard so much about them that they're tops. Uh, is that true or false? That's true. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they have put a few years in on them, uh, six on one and uh, almost five on the other, and uh, they're pretty well disciplined. They do what I tell disciplined them to. Disciplined beagles? Yeah. Oh, this is going to be a uh, treat. Hold it, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll, they'll uh, go in where I want them to, and uh, if there's a rabbit in the brush pile, they're going to flush it out. One's a strictly a good pile dog and the other one's a good trailing dog and together they really make a good team. Okay, explain that, the difference between a, what you call a pile dog and a trailing dog. <clears throat> one one dog uh, will go in there and, and rip the brush apart and won't come out at all and the other dog kind of work around the edges until it gets too excited and smells the rabbit and then it'll go in sometimes. Mm -hmm. But this other dog gets used to busting the brush. It grew up with a bigger dog and had to follow it into the brush and kind of took over that um, roll when I start hunting them with Mandy, the, my dog. So is that what makes the dogs uh, different? Their their yeah. genetics? Yeah, uh, yeah. One the one is from uh, up north around Charlotte, Petoskey area, uh, and the other one is from southern Michigan here. Huh. And you can tell by looking at them, they're a little bit oh, different. Oh, which one's the northern dog and which yeah, one's the southern uh, dog? Well, the southern <laughs> one's got a pointed nose, the other one's got a, a snub nose. I see. <laughs> There's they, something to that. Yeah, they, they well, the calm. accent, too, gives them away. Yeah, the <laughs> accent gives them away a little bit. Okay, but, but they bay like normal beagles. Yeah, yeah when they uh, smell a rabbit, they'll start barking right away and uh, dig and claw in these brush piles. Uh, or otherwise, if they shoot out, my dog will come around and pick it up and run that rabbit around until it comes back again. Are your dogs, uh, the trailing dog, is it a slow dog or fast dog? Uh, it's uh, medium. It depends on the day. Like today, it'd be kind of slow but steady. Why, t why today? Today is an uh, ideal day except for the temperature, maybe. Yeah, the temperature yeah. and the wind. Uh -huh. If we didn't have the wind and the temperature so low, they could just steam them right around to you again. Uh, but with this right here, it's ideal for getting in the brush piles right mm -hmm. now. Let's take a look at our guns. Greg, you have the high flutin. I'd open that up there, just high flutin automatic. 20 gauge semi-auto uh, Ithaca. 
with a Looks like custom a paint job. Custom paint job been used <laughs> in the marsh turkeys and whatever. Bob, you're using? I'm, I'm using this gun that I, uh, I bought for my uh, son before he was born. Uh, it's a good foil for the wife, you know. <laughs> I like it. It's just a short little youth model ranger. The stock is too short for me, but for quick pointing for rabbits and grouse. Yeah, rack the pump. pump there. To show. Yeah, it's a pump gun pumping. A little shell. short barrel. You can get through the brush. Mark, you're using it over and under Yeah, right. with a swivel mount. Yeah, it makes it a little bit uh, easier to carry. With a sling. Can, yeah, sling. jump across the creek. You can put it over your shoulder instead of dropping mm -hmm. it in the creek. Yeah. And I'm going to be using my tried and true, trusty 20 gauge single shot, inexpensive, used for my youth, well broken in, and excellent all right, rabbit all right, gun. All right. it's, you can't beat a hey, gun like this. We'll just see how you shoot. That's, okay. that's hey, you can talk all you want about a gun, but till you shoot it. That's right. But that's the nice thing about rabbit hunting. You can use a variety of guns. Sure can, yeah. 22s, but out, out here with a bunch of people with 22s, there's always a possibility of a ricochet. So shotguns are, mm -hmm. well, light shot are really fine for this. Okay, well, it feels like a good day to me yeah. for rabbits. I'm ready. We have a spot that hasn't been hunted yet this year. <laughs> Everything, we got excellent dogs. <laughs> we have a barrage of guns. Want to let the dogs out? Yes. Uh, now we want to see these well-trained, mannerly beagles. Hey, that's no fair. Mandy, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Here's something you don't the rabbit? see a beagle do. Come here. Come here. Come on. Gonna get a rabbit, Ginger? Ginger. Can get rabbit? I'll be one. that beagle okay. came back. <laughs> okay. An obedient beagle. Now that's something you don't see very often. These little dogs do have a reputation for getting out of their pens or out the back door, slipping away to the nearest patch of rabbit cover, and coming home only when they're dog tired. Their short little legs don't carry them very fast. And they don't seem to tire as quickly as the longer legged, faster running bird dogs or actually as fast as the longer-legged, older, but supposedly wiser hunters that follow these beagles wherever they go. And those beagles generally take you to rabbits. Aha, now I've spotted the first good rabbit sign here at the first brush pile. In some areas, these little pellets are thick, along with rabbit tracks going every which way. Now, brush piles always hold a lot of rabbits. Now, when I say a lot, it wouldn't be unusual to rouse 20 or 30 rabbits from a big pile this size if you could take the whole thing apart. In fact, this weather early in the season, 40 or 50 wouldn't be a surprise, but you can't take the brush pile apart, so you send the beagles in to wiggle through the sticks and the twigs and crawl under the stumps and hopefully send a few cottontails running for another nearby brush pile. Now, visibility is better for hunters on top of a brush pile but getting there can be a little tough sometimes. The dogs worm their way through everything, though. Of course, this is Ginger. This is the pile dog who spends all of her time in the thick stuff. While Mandy, there she is, patrolling the borders, trying to pick up the scent of a bunny that bolted from one pile to another. All of a sudden, Mark sees a cottontail making tracks, so he shoulders his gun. Well, it was a good shot, the second one, that is. And I retrieved Mark's first rabbit of the day. Well, while he tried to show us how a trained beagle listens. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, over here. Come on, come on, yeah. <laughs> there we go. On this 40 acres, there are probably hundreds of rabbits. Plenty to feed the neighborhood yeah. foxes, hawks, and other predators that will eat 80% of the rabbit population in a year. Well, including man, he's a predator, but he really takes a small number of the annual crop. <laughs> now, what attracts many hunters back to the fields is the taste of these critters. Underneath that fur is quite a bit of meat that is close to chicken or turkey as anything. And there are more rabbits moving around this pile. It just takes a while to see them, but when they move, oftentimes all you catch is a glimpse. Greg and I posted ourselves on the side of the brush pile that faced other piles, thinking that this would be where most of the traffic would come. Now, see if you can see the rabbit moving in there. Oh, oh, oh. There it goes. Oh, I can't shoot that way. If you saw it, you were quick. You have a sharp eye, even when you're right there. Again, in slow motion. Did you see it? We'll go backwards. It's a dark flash through the branches. Now here it comes again. 
Now it gives us you a, a good look, only for a second, though. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't watching when it came back, but you can see it run back again. There it goes. You can see how fast and fleeting cottontails are nearly impossible to catch on tape. Did you see that one run? The whole sequence at normal speed took three seconds. Bunnies and beagles, an enjoyable way to put a tasty wild meal on the table. That's America's number one most popular game animal, the cottontail rabbit, a big winter attraction among sportsmen in Michigan outdoors. Sort of makes you wonder why we refer to this animal as the elusive buck. I tell you, deer are a lot easier to photograph than cottontail rabbits are. Bob Garner went out earlier this week for two days, you know, in this cold weather. Couldn't roust a single rabbit for the camera. So we have a real tough time, but everybody has a tough time with this COLD weather that we've had. Tell you, this uh, below zero temperatures have put a damper on almost every type of outdoor activity. I imagine the steelhead fishing has been nicked. If not the fish, the fishermen for sure. Emil Dean says on the Manistee River, it has been phenomenal right into January when he expects it normally to taper off. At least it was good up until this cold weather. Ice fishing has been hampered by the cold weather of rabbit hunting, the snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, you name it. It's so cold it's hard to get out there. However, since we have to do a show next week on Northern Pike, we promised that. We are going to go off Ludington, and we're going to go out and spear. We're going to do some tip-up fishing. I don't care how cold it is tomorrow. We're going to be there, bring you a story next week. I don't know if we're going to catch any, picture, catch any fish that take, would make good pictures for the trophy book, but I tell you, some people have in weather like this. For example, this fella coming up. Ice fishing isn't the only way to go in January. There are stretches of river open like the Detroit River where Dr. Al Gerson from Rochester was fishing last January 10th. He was casting a rapala. He landed a 10 pound, 10 ounce walleye. That was fishing right off a pier. In January, that is dedication. Now another fellow that caught a 10 and a half pounder, R. Nagel from Midland, was fishing on the Tittabawassee River in Midland County. He was casting a green plastic grub, but that was back on October 26th. Hot weather compared to what we have now. And this fellow catches his share of master angler fish every year, Ben Knoll from Portage. Quite a few oddball catches end up in his net when he goes steelhead fishing. This one, a channel catfish, 31 inches long, 10 pounds, 10 ounces, hit on spawn in the St. Joe River, and that was on December 7th. Now let's look at a couple of white tails. This is, uh, looks like a fairly small rack for an 11 point, not particularly wide, but it still qualifies for a Stroh's hunting award. Malin Hobday from Union City took this trophy with a muzzleloader on November 15th in Branch County. And by the way, his wife took one with a muzzleloader too this year, a lucky family. Bernie Sturitz from Gwynn up in the UP did real well with his bow this December. A 10-pointer on the 9th of December in Marquette County. One of the tines was 11 and 3 quarter inches long. That's just about as big as they come. And here is our trophy hunter of the week. Okay, you're right. The rack isn't large enough to qualify. It only has two points. But listen to this. Bernard Kammer was hunting on opening day west of Grayling. He dragged his deer partway out of the woods himself. Now, Bernard has been hunting 62 years. He'll turn 88 this February. And for his accomplishment, I'm going to make Bernard Kammer from Redford our Michigan Outdoors oldest and wisest whitetail hunter of the week. Representative Tom Scott, who's sponsor of a measure to raise license fees up for hunting and fishing just a little bit, says that bill will come out on the House floor next week and will be up for a vote. He also warns that if it's not passed by the House and the Senate very, very quickly, that the, the massive layoff scheduled uh, for the first part of February for Fisheries and Wildlife Division will occur. He says, too, it'll take several years to bring back and rebuild those programs if these layoffs do take place. The moose herd is holding holding its own. It has had some problems. Uh, one cow has uh, died up there and been diagnosed as a brainworm-related brain death. Apparently another cow has died, uh, according to Chief Ed Mikula of the Wildlife Division. He says that just uh, two days ago they discovered one more moose dead 
and that from all outward appearances it looks like brainworm, although it has not been confirmed. They have found one calf, though, that was previously unaccounted for, and uh, overall he thinks that the moose herd is holding its own. Justice Department has issued an interesting report that says guns were used in 13% of the violent crimes between 1973 and 1982. Tied with guns, get this, were sticks and stones also at 13%. Knives came in at 11%. With this fresh new report in, it wouldn't surprise me if some group or governmental agency will now want to register sticks and stones and knives. What a brilliant idea. Outdoor reminder this week, by the way, turkey permits are due into the DNR by February 1st. Question is, will it thaw before turkey season, Bob? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. This could be a rough winter in all the wildlife. Yeah, including turkeys. It sure could. We've got a letter from uh, Gene Sedbury of Crystal Falls for you, Fred. It says, last night in your film of charter boat fishing in Lake Michigan, there was a lamprey brought up with a fish. The lamprey fell off and was wiggling around in the boat, was picked up and thrown back oh. into the water unharmed. Somehow it doesn't seem to me to be the most sensible thing to do or to show on your program. Program. Maybe I am wrong. Have lamprey been placed on the endangered species list? <laughs> no, you weren't wrong about your attitude, Gene, but what, what you saw was wrong. You see that lamprey right there? This is the one you were talking about last August on the show. It was tossed into the ice chest. We put it in the ice chest. It went to the uh, Bureau of Sport Fishers and Wildlife, uh, some research organization. They're, they're doing a, a research on lampreys and lamprecides and that sort of thing. Right. There is a concern that lampreys are becoming immune to the lamprecide TFM, and they're also finding new places to breed, so they could become a problem. So, no, we did not, nor will we ever throw any back. It surprises me. People seem to see things that aren't there on TV. Well, you know, it's easy to, to glance away yeah. and see where it was tossed, you know. I don't know. These things come up quite a bit, though. Bob, we have a question from somebody about ice fishing. Last January, you showed a film where you were using live bait illegally. It is against the law to use live bait on a treble hook. How many lines are you allowed to have in the water, including tip-ups outside the shanty? Perry Wise from Hazlitt wants to know. Oh, first question first. Uh... I, I hope Perry can find me somewhere in the law where it says it's illegal to use live bait on a treble hook. We've been unable to uh, find that, and also conservation officers say that it's not illegal. So, uh, But you can have two lines is all. That bill that would allow you three or more lines is not passed, and a spear does not count as a line. A tip-up counts as a line. A hand line counts as a line. Two lines, two rods, lines in the water is what you're allowed ice fishing. Now, Perry, and all you... Folks out there, see if you can answer this question. You had a hint earlier in the headlines. <laughs> this question in our outdoor quiz. Do guns contribute to a big percentage of injury-related accidents in the United States? No, the 10 most dangerous commonly used items are in this order. Cars, cigarettes, alcohol, toys, power saws, lawnmowers, household cleaners, kitchen ranges, bathtubs, and showers. Oh, Bob, that looks rather <laughs> nice at a time like this. That was back in July over in Kent Lake. The middle of the heat of the summer, a muggy day. <laughs> you know, I could I could hack one of those <laughs> about now. <laughs> well, even in July, it's fi fun fishing with uh, Wayne Magdalena. He, uh, he likes that Zara spook, those top water mm -hmm. baits, because he likes to see bass really come up and pound them. Well, like we learned in the trophy book, you can catch fish with methods like this during the winter, fishing along the Detroit River, the St. Clair River, as long as uh, the ice doesn't have it frozen. But lake fishing is all done. It is. It's ice fishing now. Now here we have uh, a bass come up and grab it. It isn't too spectacular. It just pulls it under. Now watch. There it did. <laughs> Gave it a little bop. A little largemouth bass coming clean out of the water. Now. One difference at this time of the year between summer is that the fish are going to be very lethargic. Fish's body is the same temperature as the water. If that water is 75 degrees, those fish are 75 degrees. That's why they're so lively. But right now, the water ranges between 32 and 39 degrees. The 39 degree water is the heaviest, so it's at the bottom. So fish that are on the bottom have a 39 degree body temperature, and that's why they're rather sluggish and slow moving while they're ice fishing. Almost as slow moving as the fishermen. Oh, like that. Well, I don't know. We, uh, we move around quite a bit sometimes just <laughs> yeah. to try to keep warm. 
Bob, you know, these lily pads and water weeds, you don't really see that much of when we're ice fishing, when we bore holes through the ice. There is some weed growth that will continue on if the ice is really clear, but uh, certainly not the extent that uh, we see here. Of course, the lily pads, they kind of freeze out, but they have an extensive root system and are right back up next summer. They're sort of like a pineapple. Yeah, they do, the they do look like that. Now, the clarity of the water, too, generally ice fishing you can see much deeper in the water than you can in the summer with the algae blooms. That's right, and I think uh, sometimes when the water gets that, uh, that murky, Wayne, uh, Wayne likes to run that spinnerbait even a little slower so the fish can see it, too. And there's some of those weeds. By the way, weeds do grow in the winter under the ice if there's enough sunlight. Now, right now, we have so much snow on the ice, that's what inhibits the weed growth, inhibits the oxygenation of the water, and oftentimes kills fish in some of the shallower lakes especially. Oh boy, look at that. <laughs> now I imagine up a tip up town we'll haul up some weeds like that that'll have pike in it. Yeah, well that's because the pike will, pike will take off for that, but uh, we'll catch them right above the weeds. Largemouth bass. This was taken by the way, Kent Lake. Kent Lake has come up with some spectacular trophies during the winter, some large pike. And Wayne says that's the place to fish for pike. I tell you, summer fishing, we got to take a look at it now and then. But now let's take a look at some of the activities coming up on our outdoor calendar. This Sunday, bring your bow, fling some arrows, and enjoy the company of the Chippewa Bow Hunters at their open house in Leslie. A three-part class on waterfowl carving begins on Wednesday night at the MSU Auditorium in East Lansing. Instructor Jim Wicks has geared this class for beginners and intermediate carvers. No shortage of ice and snow this year at Houghton Lake. Join the festivities at Tip Up Town January 18th and 19th or on the 25th and 26th. Now we'll be there the first weekend. On February 22nd, the lucky hunters who took 10-point bucks or larger and turkey hunters who took trophies will be honored at the fourth annual Stroh's Hunting Awards Banquet at Romas of Livonia. And on April 5th at Romas, you will host the 1985 Master Angler winners for their night of glory. Some of the biggest fish of the year will be on display. Both banquets will be better than ever. A new event is our Fish and Wild Game Cooking Contest, which will be televised as a PBS special on March 6th. If you'd like to qualify, send us the recipe for your favorite fish or wild game dish. The rules are simple and in the January-February issue of the Outdoor Digest, which is being mailed this weekend. Drop us a line if you want us to send you the rules or just send us your favorite recipe and that will put you in the running. Don't forget the Outdoor Fair, June 27th through the 29th at Houghton Lake, a summer tip-up town for the whole family. If you missed a phone number, call the Michigan Travel Bureau toll-free at 1-800-292-2520. And that's a look at this week's Michigan Outdoors calendar. Calendar. You know, it may not look like much at first glance. Oh, I think it looks the great. The cheese, the broccoli, and what's underneath it? Rabbit. Rabbit, some of the rabbit that we got the other day. This recipe, without giving away the ending to this story, <laughs> I start, I'm saying this every week now. Yes, I'm you saying, this is the best recipe of the this year. This is. I vote for this one. It's the best game recipe so far in 1986 right. without That's a doubt. That's right. There we go. We're safe with that. Bob? <laughs> hey, just keep talking. I, keep I, talking. I, okay. <laughs> this is good. The meat on a rabbit is dark meat. Like, this is why it tastes like turkey or chicken. Or chicken, that's right. It tastes like drumstick to me. Mm -hmm. Very easy to make. We got, looks like a stew. We got celery, carrots, onion. Looks like a rabbit stew is going right in here. I'm going to boil this with a rabbit. Um, it, you need to boil it for about an hour because you want to get that rabbit off the bones, and it should come off fairly easy. And that's for flavoring the carrots? Yeah, like a... I mean, like it's, a, it goes with rabbit, carrots that's and right. rabbit, sort that's of go right. together. Should go together. Need just a little bit of salt to boil this in. Not, I don't like a whole lot of salt. Mm -hmm. And boil it for how long? An hour. Because, like I say, you do want it to fall right off the bones, and it does. Boy, There's... I tell you, rabbit meat for people who haven't had it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you If they like it. drumstick of chicken or like turkey, <laughs> dark meat especially, it tastes exactly okay, like I'm going to do this two different ways, Fred. We've got <laughs> just the rabbit here, and I'm going to put vegetables underneath the cooked ones that were cooked with rabbit. That's right. The recipe doesn't really say... It didn't designate what to do with them, and I didn't want to throw them out. Mm -hmm. So we just going to well, put under they're half. They're tasty in here. Very they're good. Tasty, but... You know, broccoli spheres. There's the other half of the mm -hmm. rabbit recipe name. I'm just going to lay those on there. The frozen ones. Frozen. And thaw them. You don't want to cook them because they are going to cook in the oven. So mm -hmm. these are just thawed. I'm going to lay those out. 
Bob says he'd never heard of broccoli spears. Mm. <laughs> there they are, Bob. Broccoli <laughs> spears. Just like it Asparagus says. spears. Ah. Cream of chicken soup, not cream of mushroom. No. The but the chicken. chicken goes with the flavor that's of the rabbit. That's right, that's right. You could use rabbit or chicken for this. Cream of mushroom, cream of chicken, it does nothing but enhance anything. That's mm -hmm. right. You can't go wrong with it. You really can't. Okay, you can spread this on here. Now that's going to bake for about an hour. Just a little bit more salt and pepper on this. And it's going to bake for an hour. Another hour in the oven? That's right, at 350 degrees. And here it and is. And cheese on top at the last 15 minutes. Oh boy, I tell you, this <laughs> is super. This is mine, yep. This is My absolutely favorite. great. You know, oh. I, I suppose if you didn't tell a kid that it, rabbit in it, that this would be the first time that a kid would eat all the meat and all the vegetables. That's right. It is tasty. That's right. Well, you can see here in this little piece of rabbit right here that it is extremely tender, and it does look like the dark meat on turkey, especially, mm -hmm. I think. Tastes you know. like it incredible recipe Kathy you know we want to remind people for our recipe contest oh yeah March 6th is the date we're gonna have a live PBS special where we have a cook-off you should be lots of fun you and Bob and Mort Neff Emil and, Dean and no Emil won't be there he's gonna be down in Mexico but oh. Randy from the Holiday Inn right. up in Houghton Lake will be the judges send in your favorite recipes to us we have the rules in the Outdoor Digest mm -hmm. which is being printed was printed today, is going in the mail tomorrow, so you folks will all be getting it. With this recipe. The address for the recipe contest, this recipe, the whole works. Bob, let the folks know how they can get it. Now, see if you can see the rabbit moving in there. Oh, oh, oh. There it goes. Oh, I can't shoot that way. If you saw it, you were quick. You have a sharp eye, even when you're right there. Again, in oh. slow motion. Did you see it? Oh, go backwards. It's a dark flash through the branches. And here it comes again. Now it gives us you a, a good look, only for a second, though. Mm -hmm. Now, I wasn't watching when it came back, but you can see it run back again. There it goes. You can see how fast and fleeting cottontails are. Nearly impossible to catch on tape. Did you see that one run? The whole sequence at normal speed took three seconds. Bunnies and beagles, an enjoyable way to put a tasty wild meal on the table. That's America's number one most popular game animal, the cottontail rabbit, a big winter attraction among sportsmen in Michigan outdoors.